Hi everyone, my name's Ali. I'm going to talk to you today about a Sentinel-2 cloud masking data set that my colleague John Mertzaglod and I have created in the last few months. Uh, we hope that this data set will be of value to people wanting to both train and test their cloud masking algorithms on Sentinel-2. Um, so first we're going to go over how we sampled the images and uh, the structure of the data set. Then we're going to talk a little bit about how we annotated it using a tool called Iris that we developed. Um, which uses a bit of machine learning in the background to speed up the annotation process. And then we're going to look at uh, the statistics of the data set and um, plans for release, which may or may not have happened by the time you see this video. We began by taking the total 2018 Sentinel-2 archive and randomly sampling scenes from it to get a nice diverse representative sample. We then took uh, 1,024 pixel squared subscenes from each of those products that we had selected at 20 meters per pixel. Given that we shared the labeling between two people, we decided to use a small hand-selected set of 10 images to calibrate our annotation styles. We then set about annotating images individually, eventually reaching 473 between us. After this, we both annotated another 50 more random images, which will act as a validation set and give us a measure of our inter-annotator agreement. During the whole annotation process, we did discard 17 images uh, because of corruption or noise. Now we can have a look at how the Iris annotation tool works. Uh, this is the main interface of Iris. We can see here the image that needs to be annotated uh, in the red dotted lines. And uh, we can see it in multiple band combinations that Iris allows us to switch between and configure. So if we take a look at the Cirrus view, uh, we can see actually at the top of the image that the Cirrus view is uh, really bright, which suggests that maybe it's a cumulonimbus cloud. Um, so we can also adjust the brightness or the contrast of the image very easily, uh, either using the controls at the top you see or the hotkeys. Once we're happy with how the image looks, we can start annotating. So first we can select the cloud class from the menu or by using the hotkeys and then scroll and zoom around the image, adjust our paintbrush size and begin painting some cloudy areas. Uh, the random forest uh, that is behind um, the annotations is most effective with a diverse set of pixels. So we take samples from both light and dark areas of the clouds and from the cumulonimbus and some of the other lower lying clouds. And you can see there, if we make a mistake, we can easily erase it. So now we can start annotating with the clear class. Uh, and for this demonstration, just for simplicity, I'm not gonna do the shadows as a different class. So we're just gonna label it all as clear. And once we've taken a diverse set from a whole uh, range of different areas in the image, we can hit train on the AI, which trains the random forest on what we've done so far, and then populates the rest of the image with the results. So then we can probably see, yep, yeah, so there's some errors here if we zoom in, and we can go, and go ahead and correct those. Um, and once we've corrected a few images, we can then retrain the uh, random forest with our new training set. And we can repeat this process several times until we're happy with the result. So now I'll just talk a little bit about the structure of the data set. Um, so the image and mask will both be saved as NumPy arrays. Um, the image is at 20 meters, but uh, we will provide also a shape file. Uh, then you can retrieve the, uh, the scene and the area from the scene that we took. As well as this, we also provide a metadata file with a bunch of information about the image and these uh, binary classification labels so that when you come to test your algorithm, you can see where it's underperforming and in what circumstances. And now finally, we'll have a quick look at some of the statistics about the data set. So those binary classification labels that I uh, mentioned, uh, we can see here the uh, prevalence of those classification labels across the whole data set. And we can see the data set has a really good spread of different surface types, different cloud types, heights, thicknesses. We've also had a look at inter-annotator agreement between John and I for the calibration and validation sets. So you can see here the total pix pixel-wise accuracy and the F1 scores for clear and cloud classes are all in the mid 90s. Uh, roughly similar actually between the calibration and validation sets. For Cloud Shadow, we do see unfortunately a, a bit of a drop and that's kind of expected because it's a much rarer class. I think about 2% of our pixels are classified as Cloud Shadow. So you'll naturally see a drop in F1 score. But overall, I think this shows that our annotations are fairly close to one another. And it also gives uh, users a kind of bar to aim for for so-called human level performance on the data set. So thank you for watching this short video. If you have any questions or if you'd like to know more about the data set or get your hands on it, please do get in touch and I will be happy to help. Thanks.